Hello everyone, welcome back to another Reason 10 tutorial with Eolia and ADSR. Today we're going to be talking about Radical Piano. Now the reason I talk about Radical Piano, it's not even new, everyone knows about it, but so much more people have access to it now because it's now a native thing inside of Reason, which is great. It's not prohibitively expensive because you don't have to go out of your way to buy it. It's now just in Reason and you could use it, which is fantastic. So Radical Piano is just a sampled piano. However, unlike piano, say, in the contact libraries like the Maverick and Grandeur and Unicorda, this piano works off the basis that there's multiple microphones and multiple pianos that can be kind of morphed between right here with our microphone blend and the type of piano and all sorts of craziness here to kind of make your own piano by layering other pianos together a little bit. And that's kind of interesting. We have some lots of lots of choices here, um, not some. And we have things like our velocity response tune, a sustain pedal, which is easily automatable. As I must say, is you can hold the alt button and click. And we'll be already seeing that we have a sustain pedal automation, which we can quickly just make some sustain, stretch this automation as long as we want, say just for this clip. And then when we make our next clip, we don't want any sustain. Or maybe on specific chords, we want to have sustain, but not all the time. So in our velocity spot response, we have an option to set the high and the low. So what this means is if I want the low, the lowest of the low, to be louder, I just turn this up. Now the lowest of the low is louder. Now the lowest of the low is much louder than it actually should be, which is kind of nice because like if you don't want those really low keys to go, they don't have to go. You can also just turn it all the way down and it's off entirely. And you can have really, really no changes at all in your velocity. You can hit quite hard if you turn them both down and there's no substantial difference. So there's some sort of like options here. We have a response curve. So basically when we hit really hard, we have to think there's like a curve. We have a curve like this here. I'm gonna use this EQ as my line. So this is between these two points, this nice straight line. This is a pretty standard velocity response. Now that's what this would be if we were to be at zero. If I hit a note, Softly, it'll play here, the horizontal being the velocity and the vertical being the volume. So when we press the velocity a certain degree, it's going to go up, you know, relative to that value because this is a straight linear graph. But if we start to get fancy and add some curve to it, what's going to happen is something like this is going to go down where, yeah, okay. So now there's a curve in our line. So if we can think about how that reacts. So after say this point, all our velocity will be less changing. It will be less significant. It will take more velocity to make a bigger change. Where if we go the other way around, like say like, like this, after this point right here, the tiniest velocity will make the biggest volume change now in our line. And that's essentially what this is going to do. We have our tune, we have our sustain, uh, some drift even. How much like do we want the piano to drift? Really interesting sound. We have our resonance levels. Just some piano stuff, basically. We have some envelope options. We can make like a glitchy haunting piano kind of sounding like a harpsichord this way if you want to do it that way we have mechanics like for example key sounds pedal sounds things that would be inside of the piano
And then we have some ambience, which is just a, like, you know, a fancy word for reverb and a few other things. Now up here at the top, we have the microphone blend, like I had said. So this is the instrument blend. Now, I believe what this will do is blend between this left section and this right section. But because they're both set to the exact same thing, we're not going to hear anything being done. If we switch to a different preset that has different on the right and left and we try blending now. There's our difference. So over here, we can set the type of piano. And then over here, we can sort of set the type of piano on the top. Sorry. So in these one, two, three, we have our types of pianos right here. And then we have the miking type. We have a close mic, jazz mic, floor mic, ambience mic, or vintage mono. So a close mic would be a microphone that's like inside the piano right against the strings. A jazz piano would be a little more out a floor piano floor mic is like the microphone is like literally on the floor so in the case of say we only have this for a deluxe grand and an upright these two pianos in a way the deluxe grand would work as the microphone would be underneath the grand piano and then we have the ambience which would be in the distance and vintage mono i don't know but you can blend between them and over here we have a subdued agitated character so this is similar to the color inside of like the contact pianos where It's just hard right away in the agitated mode. Let's go down. There was a nice piano down here. This one. If we go to agitated, it just sounds rough. If we bring it down to subdued, it's nice and soft. And if you add like a lot of reverb to that, sounds nice and ambient as this would suggest by being called ambience, but the subdued really helps push it um, to the back and make it really wide instead of right up in front of you and harsh. Now uh, we can go through some presets to just see how different all the pianos sound. It's just a great piano that will always give you different results every single time. Definitely my go-to piano when I'm inside of Reason. I don't even bother looking at contact libraries because this thing just comes up with such interesting sounds so quickly. Thanks for watching. See you soon.